you are welcome to my channel thanks for visiting i have published a full presentation on prostate cancer but here i'm just presenting you know, an excerpt from the four hour full presentation on prostate cancer a to z if you want to have that full presentation you can go through this very link here there are a lot of controversies surrounding screening or not when it comes to prostate cancer. Without further ado, let's go and examine prostate cancer screening or not. Further pieces of information about prostate cancer will be gotten through this very link. Thing. Okay, let's get to the business, prostate cancer. You know what this really stands for, right? Mm. Now, we can ask ourselves the question, why the need for this presentation? Why should I continue to listen to what this man would talk about? What is this prostate cancer all about? Why the stress? Oh, don't worry. Lung cancer is the common cause of cancer death in men. Do you know the second type of cancer that could be responsible for cancer death in men? The answer is prostate cancer. So it is uh, helpful if we know everything about prostate cancer and then you know, go on with our life without bothering ourselves about prostate cancer anymore, or we'll start the screening at the appropriate time. Let me go through the first note here. Nothing is fixed about prostate cancer. The pieces of information we are gonna get here about prostate cancer will go round and round and round, then we'll get to the final bus stop. It is all over the map. Some will say it is all over the place. But I will do my best to make sure we navigate rightly you know, and get to you know, the conclusion about prostate cancer. In other words, we will get to how to make definitive diagnosis of prostate cancer. Prostate cancer uh, could be tagged as a silent killer in the sense that it can kill you, but prostate cancer will do so silently and whether that, it grows very slowly. Some people can have prostate cancer in the next 10 years, they will have no headache, but it could metastasize get to some other parts of the body and at that stage curing it will become a mirage. It affects black men disproportionately more than all other men from all other areas in the world. Get these facts right. All men who have prostate cancer Black men will suffer more than the rest around the world. However, prostate cancer is worldwide. It's found worldwide. My advice is you follow the protocol in your jurisdiction after listening to this presentation. The information here, the pieces of information here is expected to bring the necessary transformation and appropriate actions should follow. Now, dedication. I would like to dedicate this entire presentation to the memory of all men worldwide who you know, have died due to prostate cancer. I'm going to pay a special tribute 
to a learner legal icon who you know, I knew very well. Not my patient, because I just you know, I knew about the case from A to Z. It's someone very close to me who I had known years before he came down with prostate cancer. You know what? Brilliant, you know, man, a legal icon, PhD order, former dean of faculty of law, a man with the status of Supreme Court in his country, did not know that he was having prostate cancer. So, prostate cancer has no regard for your level of education or none of it, whether you are wealthy or poor, whether you are comfortable or homeless, there's no regard for that. All that is important is you know through this presentation that you are one of those who must go for screening quickly. If not, by the time this slow growing cancer will be discovered to be in your body, it might have gone beyond you know, the point of remedy. It might, you know, uh, like point of no return. No. Okay, this legal expert or lawyer, attorney, or whatever you call in your jurisdiction, the first sign that he picked was frequent falls and weakness. He approached his physician, he started working on what was responsible. And along the line, they picked that metastasis has already occurred, affecting the bones. Imagine that. So, he died. He died. Not because he was poor, not because he didn't have education. He died because the slowly growing cancer got him. Because the cancer spread beyond the prost prostate gland, metastasized to all over the body before being diagnosed. And at that stage, no remedy. So listen to this presentation and learn one or two things. Then start leading the campaign against deaths due to prostate cancer. Our advice that all men will listen to this. Listen to this and pass it to your friend, to your brother, to your nephew, to your son, uncle, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, and even passage to you know, women who will help their husbands, their sons, you know, their fathers, their uncles, their brothers as well. Don't wait for the symptoms. And someone will ask me the question, why that? Like I said, these cancer will grow slowly. And all you could pay most of the times would be lower urinary tract symptoms, symptoms of obstructive uropathy. Now, I will get into all the symptoms in a bit, so I know it'll take all your time right here. Then, some other people who are unlucky, like you know, the legal icon that I knew very well, will pick. The first symptoms, the first time when it has already metastasized, like force, frequent force and weakness, pain, confusion, even anemia. So for that reason, please don't wait for the symptoms before you approach your physician on the way out not to die due to 
prostate cancer. Now, spring. I had a story of a family uh, who said they will sue their father's physician who came down with you no know, uh, bad stage of prostate cancer and no treatment could help and the uh, elderly man died and one of the daughters said we're going to get the family physician sued for not screening for the prostate cancer before you know, the bad stage that our father was uh, diagnosed with. Now, uh, when it comes to screening of prostate cancer, I'm not defending the physician, but I'm telling you the facts that you cannot blame that physician you know, too much for the following reasons. In medical work, we have timetable and routine screening times for cervical cancer, for breast cancer, for colorectal cancer, and the risk goes. But for prostate cancer, no. In fact, what we are going to get through this presentation is that there is argument for screening and argument against screening. For prostate cancer. To those who are arguing for screening of uh, prostate cancer, we say this. One, since there is no symptom per se in any part of prostate cancer, then screen. Second, they will say if you pick prostate cancer early, and treatment is embarked upon you know, with some other interventions that can help greatly and the man will eventually die of another cause, not process you know, cancer. Three, if signs and symptoms are pointing to lower urinary tract symptoms, then why not having prostate cancer screening done? And be sure it is not BPH, it's not urinary tract uh, infection, it's not prostatitis, it's not um, uh, exercise or trauma, and so on. Okay. In addition to that, uh, when you have screening done and you are picking high level of PSA, the argument for is that that is good. That would trigger you know, further investigations like trans, you know, rectal ultrasound. Then you will be able to determine whether we should have biopsy and have definitive diagnosis and be able to help the man out early in time. Also, for screening, when someone has been diagnosed with prostate cancer and he is on the treatment, screening will help in monitoring. There is no fight, there is no quarrel over the you know, last part that I've just said. Once somebody is already you know, definitively diagnosed and is on treatment, then uh, there's no problem you know, about screening then everybody will agree that that will be screening. Okay, now, uh, let's see. Some people will argue against screening and they have more points than those who will argue for. Now, what do they have to say? Argument against screening for prostate cancer. Number one, the high level of prostatic uh, specific antigen is not a guarantee that it is prostate cancer. Whether uh, there is false positive and only 25% of high level of PSA 
is truly prostate cancer. When PSA is pretty high, it could be urinary tract infection, it could be as a result of BPH, it could be as a result of digital rectal examination done, or because you know, the man had already just uh, had ultrasound done, mm -hmm, uh, transurethral ultrasound, mm -hmm. or this man had just uh, finished exercise like biking before the sample was taken or because of biopsy or trauma you no know, uh, affecting the prostate gland or because it's a warmer climate or you no know, the individual are just you know uh, ejaculated so all these things could lead to high level of psa so those who are arguing against will say you are wasting your time. The value of PSA doesn't mean the person is having prostate cancer. Okay. Another reason why they are saying no screening, that is argument against, is we can have false negative. So when you screen and the PSA level is low, that doesn't rule out prostate cancer. Let me pause and rewind myself here so you have taken the sample of PSA it's been acid and the result has come back and PSA level is low don't tell the patient congratulations sir you know why about 10 to 15 percent of prostate cancer will not produce a high level of PSA wow wow Another argument against is we can be overdiagnosing. We can be overdiagnosing. Why that? You might be diagnosing a man with prostate cancer, and it may not be the type that is very harmful. It might be the type that the man can even live with and die a natural death after. Then near having that meeting and declaring to the man that I'm sorry to declare this to you that uh, the Bausi had you know, come back and then you are having prostate cancer would be enough to tilt him into depression, into anxiety, and that might be what will even kill the man. How about the stress of the treatment that may not even be needed in the first place because the next 10 years if it's not the aggressively growing type we will get, we'll get into different types later on where differentiated on differentiated and intermediate we'll go over them how about the loss of money and time and the side effects and complications of you no, know, every medication, chemotherapy, you know, radiotherapy, hormone therapy, they all have side effects. Why do we want to subject someone into all these things when the type of prostate cancer they have will not do them any harm for the next 10 years and the man will even die before the end of 10 years? Naturally. So that is why some who are arguing against are saying, you don't need to be subjecting people to unnecessary stress. Even when PSA has led to diagnosis, that may not change the chances of dying. I said it. So, people who argue against have so many uh, points, but those who argue for, they've stated their points earlier. So, Listening can continue to listen and make up your mind by the time I'll be running off. Now, who should even think that he or she will need screening for prostate cancer? Who should even, should, should it cross the mind of everyone? I would say yes for all men all over the world. But more 
now about the fallen people. If you are a black man or a man from the Caribbean, you should be thinking about it once you have lower urinary tracts uh, symptoms and the symptoms of obstructive uropathy. I will go into all those symptoms very soon. So I will just want to whet your appetite. If I say it here, you, you, you might end the uh, presentation and then run to your doctor. So you'll get it in a bit. So you're a black man or you're from Caribbean and you're having lower urinary tract symptoms uh, symptoms of obstructive uropathy. It might be P BPH, it may not be. It might, it might not be uh, benign prostatic apoplasia, it, it might be prostatic cancer. You are not black, you are Asian or white or you have family history of prostate cancer in your grandfather, father, uncle, you know, uh, son, as the case may be, then you need screening now that you're getting older, right? 40, 45. You are 45 years old and there's positive family history, you need screen. Okay. You are not black, you are Caucasian, you are Asian, you are Latino, Hispanic, and you are a man. Okay. And you are greater than 50 right now, but with signs and symptoms of obstructive uropathy that I will get into later on, lower urinary tracts, mm -hmm. then you need to have that conversation with your physician that uh, is it only urinary tracts that you know, uh, infection that could give me this? Is it only BPH? Why can't we screen for cancer? Now, you have other form of cancer in, in your body. Maybe because you've been smoking for a long time, then you are done with lung cancer, no cancer elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Then you are greater than 60 years old now with other forms of cancer in your body. You know, and you are having symptoms of obstructive uropathy. Then have that conversation with your physician. Um, there is no recommendation for general screening for the entire populace, unlike cervical cancer, breast cancer, or colorectal cancer. We don't have that here. Okay. You have agreed to be screened. The screening has started. The PSA is the result is back and it is high. Then the question is, okay. And so what? What is going to fall? Of course, many things will happen. I will go into that when we reach diagnosis, but just to watch your appetite right now, that high level of PSA is not saying you have prostate cancer immediately. We can't say that, but it is pointing to it. And also, low level of PSA it's not saying you don't have prostate cancer. No, no doctor will tell you, oh, your PSA is, is low, congratulations, no prostate cancer. No, that's nothing like that. Because you can have prostate cancer and PSA is low. And then the, the next question somebody will tell me is, so why doing the prostate uh, specific antigen at all? Well, I will tell you more when we reach diagnosis. So when PSA is high, we then do more tests. We we'll do CD scan, we we'll do um, ultrasound, we we'll do MRI, PET, we we'll can even do bone scanning, we we'll do everything and then determine if you are qualified for biopsy. So when the biopsy is done, reported, histologically examined, then glazing. Um, uh, grouping and classification is written, then treatment will commence.